Welcome to a Tin Dog Podcast. Ah, you thought I was starting to cover Big Finish, didn't you? Fooled you. I'm not starting the enormous, monumental mammoth task of reviewing the Big Finishes just yet, because something else has come along, something a bit more important, something more banging on your door. You see, Tom Baker's series is back, and I've not been paying any attention whatsoever to that. I will be covering, or at least mentioning, the new big finishes as they come out. I'm not an idiot. What I will be doing, however, is a whole retrospective thing on the proper original big finish run. Because, as we all know, the things that affect us only affect us a long time afterwards. So I'll be able to look back at the stories in the same way that we used to look back at VHS episodes when we used to remember old Doctor Who. But now there's something marvellous, something magical, something fantastic, something rather sad, from Big Finish. Yes, the Antimatter. Series 2 of Tom Baker's slightly spin-off-y series, because Tom Baker never gets to be part of the main range, as far as I can see, for several important reasons. First off, his releases are one disc long each. Which is fine, if it's one story per release. Except I know for a fact that in this series, Story 2 and Story 3 are so linked as to basically be parts of the same story. That annoys me. That makes me think, just release them together. Because Big Finish are capable of releasing two-disc stories. But that's me getting ahead of myself. The reason that I've not reviewed these up to now, apart from bandwidth issues, is because of Mary Tam. Mary Tam, the first Romana, passed away last year. And I was quite a big fan. I'm quite a big fan of most of the Companions. But I was so saddened by this that I couldn't really bring myself to listen to them. They sort of sat there on my MP3 player and every time I'd scroll to them to play them, I'd scroll straight past. It was just too much for me. Thinking that once these had been listened to and once they were gone, there'd be no more Romana. Now I know there are people out there who only like to have something in its entirety. They really shouldn't be Doctor Who fans. They're the sort of people who think, right, everyone else likes Harry Potter. I'll wait till the end of the last book gets released. Then I'll buy them all and I'll read them all back to back. Well, I know there are some people out there like that. People who make Doctor Who fans even Doctor Who fans look mental. But that's not important. I am rambling. Basically, I was saddened by her demise and I couldn't really bring myself to listen to them. But I thought I'd better do it because I like Tom. Tom was the doctor I grew up with, and for a long time Tom was my doctor, until I discovered VHS videos of John. And even saying that, I still have a massive, massive respect for Mad Uncle Tom. So, this is a series set immediately after the key to time, and obviously before the regeneration. Now the problem with these as well is that Tom's rapidly running out of people to do his show with. Now I know Tom's hardly a young man, None of us truly are. But it's nice to have him with a variety of companions. But let's look at the list. Can't work with the Brigadier. Can't work with Harry. Can't work with Sarah. Can work with Leela. Can't work with the first Romana. The second Romana? Would Mrs. Tom really like him working with his ex? Would Mr. Romana, God bless him, would he really like his wife working with his ex, with her ex i don't know uh, moving on which takes us rather rapidly to matthew waterhouse matthew i don't really want to work for big finish but i might but i won't but i might and tegan hmm would janet want to work with tom it didn't get on at the time but that was only for one story so you're basically left with leela or may the time lords forbid it a brand new companion even another Doctor. The egos would be incredible. Now, I know this is going to happen in November, but you can see the problem. You're left with either Leela or, well, someone new. Someone from the Big Finish range. Who would you put with Tom? 
I would see answers on a postcard, but let's face it, let's just leave it there, shall we? So, we now know the reasons why I didn't review it. I now know I have to review it. I'm going to review it. Here's the review. It's not bad. Thanks very much for listening. No, seriously, the antimatter is a play on words. A pun. Something Stephen Fry said you should avoid quite, quite a lot. Jonathan Morris, the author, is very good at capturing the era, the atmosphere, the language of 70s Doctor Who. When I was listening to this, I actually thought it was set sort of the now, the now that they would be set. So obviously I would say it would be set in the 70s. It wasn't until a few uh, lines about quantum mechanics and development and certain fields made me realise that it was actually set in the 30s, which made more sense because the overriding feel and themes in this belong in, and I know this has been said elsewhere because it's just true, Bertie Wooster stories. P.G. Woodhouse and Doctor Who don't belong together. The argument has been put forward before. I'm not sure I agree with it, because here it works. And more importantly, Douglas Adams cited P.G. Woodhouse's work and writing as a major influence on his development. Obviously, we take what's influenced us and move on with it. So, to say that Adams' work can't have influenced Doctor Who is just ridiculous. P.G. Woodhouse's work therefore influenced Doctor Who. So, with that argument in mind, and the fact that Blandings had just been on BBC One, a series of P.G. Woodhouse adaptations, although everyone's much more familiar with, say, Jeeves and Wooster in its various incarnations, especially the Stephen Fry one. Why are we back to Stephen Fry again? We then take it from there. I have rambled far too much. Let's drag it back to the actual plot. K-9 is on board the TARDIS. The TARDIS has abandoned the Doctor and Romana 1 on Earth in order to nip off round the galaxy and try and put the Black Guardian off the scent. Dun dun dun! Bit of a waste of time, you'll catch up with him in a couple of years' time for the whole Turlo thing. Leave it there. They're living in a stately home. You're not sure how they've got it, but you just kind of accept it. It's not the little house as seen in the audio Go Tom Baker stories. No, this is something much more impressive. They even have staff. They have a butler and a servant. This is the point where the narrative splits in two. Tom's working on some sort of gizmo or gadget, and Romana goes off to find out more about Earth. She bumps into a person, a young man, who's on the lookout for a girl. Skip back to the actual opening sequence, where we've discovered that a rather daft individual, someone akin to Bertie Wooster, who's had their mind messed with in order to make them even more daft, is actually been sent out into the world by his auntie, hence the title Antimatter, because it's a matter to do with ants rather than the antimatter that causes explosions. You see, we're back to the pun. In order to bring young women home so that their life force can be absorbed into the old hag of an ant and therefore, like some sort of vampire, go on living. It's a space vampire, so obviously she uses technology and butlers, which are very good at things. Butlers so good, they're like Jeeves, that they're in fact robots. You can see how it lends itself so perfectly to Doctor Who. The clever bit with this story is the split narrative. You get half of the adventure with Romana and half of it with Tom, both of which thinking they're solving the entire narrative themselves, rather than the standard split narrative where you jump from one scene to another scene to allow the non-action to take place which is standard Doctor Who stuff, standard run all drama. But here it's very clever, much cleverer than it appears at first. And this is a a fundamentally good point of the writing. It's so easy when you're listening to it that you actually think it's not particularly well done. It's not until you dissect it and take it apart that you realise in fact the mechanics of this story are really, really excellent. Yes, it's a fairly standard runaround if you want to see it that way, but you don't have to. You can see it as clever. You can see it as rather witty. Julia McKenzie, who's been in a couple of other big finishes, though nothing of major note, that, she, her performance is brilliant. Now you know her from Fresh Fields, you know her from other things, but she is very, very good and used to the max here. So yes, the antimatter does mark the beginning of a remarkably good series, and I will be covering it as we go on, because I think Tom's great. So until next time, where I'll be talking about Doctor Who and the series on TV approaches us with great speed, be seeing you. The Fourth Doctor Adventures. Doctor Who. The Anti-Matter. So now the TARDIS is flitting randomly throughout time and space. Yes, until the Black Guardian gets tired of chasing it and then it will return to us here in London. Eventually. 
Still, it doesn't matter. I was just going to let him know that I was heading down to... Where was it again? Bassett on Hamble. Yeah. Somewhere just outside of it is called Bassett on Hamble. This is your place. Well, it's my country seat. Bassett Hall, you see. The current owner is my aunt, though she's come over a trifle odd of late. <laughs> <laughs> I have more aunts than I know what to do with. Just when I think I have the set, another one pops out of the woodwork when least expected. They're like mice. The errant doctor. Yes. I was wondering how long it would take until you turned up. Give me a moment and I should be able to set it to overload. Oh, I won't pretend to have a clue what you're doing. Auntie, please, you must stop this. The poor fellow will die. That is rather the point, you abysmal goof. That's it. Are you sure? Nothing seems to be... Subscribers get more at bigfinish.com You've been listening to the Tin Dog Podcast. Doctor Who and its connected properties are copyright and trademark of the BBC... No infringement is intended. To contact the show, email tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk. Hoostrology, a time traveller's almanac, is available through Telos Publishing or Amazon. Visit www.hoostrology.com for further information. The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance. (laughs) 